Wake up, Finny. It's time to trade. Get up, get up, get up. So it's 2024 and it's been a few years since I put money into stocks, IRAs, options, and having anxiety when waiting for my tax documents, not knowing whether I need to pay thousands this year or if I've lost enough money not to pay taxes. I don't want other people to make the same mistakes, so here's a video about my first time investing and what I've learned since then. Back in my college years, I was working a part-time job that didn't pay much, and probably just like you right now, I was eating and watching YouTube videos when I stumbled upon a video talking about Robinhood and these new investment apps not charging you a fee when you buy stocks, which was a new concept back then. At the time, none of my friends or family talked about finance or investments, and videos or articles online kept preaching to invest while you're young. So I thought I'd give it a try and learn by experience. So I downloaded the app, made an account, and deposited $70 into it, which was the amount of money I was comfortable to lose in case this thing was a scam. Once the money was fully deposited, I went shopping. I had no idea what I was doing, and honestly, I have zero idea why I bought Sprint, Zynga, GoPro, and other random stocks. But once I bought it, I remember having anxiety and constantly checking my phone to see how the stocks were doing. So I put my phone down for a few minutes only to come back to me losing 13 cents of value on my sprint stock. I quickly sold it so I wouldn't lose any more and obviously it went back up moments later. I kept doing this over and over again for the first year or so because sometimes I would make profit but I ended up losing quite a lot. Throughout these years I didn't do much research into what I was buying. I kept trying to gamble my money into time in the market and I let my emotions get the best of me mostly the time. So it took a pretty big hit on me emotionally because all that stress was for nothing. Not even nothing. It was negatively impacting me financially and emotionally. So what the heck was I doing this for? I decided to take a hiatus in 2018. A year or so later, I got a better paying job and I was highly considering a Tesla. I loved tech and I was wasting a lot of money commuting like multiple hours every day. I did the math and I would be saving a lot of money if I invested in electric and charged at home or outside chargers. I decided to get a cheap Tesla Model 3 after doing months and months of planning. And to this day, I still think it's one of my best investments yet. After a few months of driving the car, I was extremely satisfied and thought this is way better than my old car and there wasn't anything like it at the time. I thought maybe I should invest in some Tesla. I had some extra income at the time since the part-time was paying pretty well and re-downloaded the Robinhood app. I bought $900 of Tesla and let it sit there for a day. Next day, I gained about three bucks and I sold it, $3 out of thin air. I was like, all right, that was fun. Relax, Finny, relax. Let's go. A few weeks later, I was feeling pretty spicy again. Put in 450 bucks, let it sit there for two days. Crazy, wasn't I? Came back, $28 baby sold weeks went by and i was on a roll bets became higher and so did profits you know that feeling when you're on a win streak when you're basically on fire imagine that with your actual paycheck it feels good i was actually winning a bit it came with a lot of stress though because i had to be on top of the stocks i was holding on I also discovered this thing called options, which from my understanding is basically people saying they could tell the future and putting boatloads of money on it. Due to my lack of self-control at the time, I tried it out. It's essentially a high risk, high reward type of thing. I bought some options that bet the stock price would go up. And when it did, I made a nice chunk of value. But if it went down, I lost a nice chunk of value. These options can go to zero dollars fast, by the way, even if the stock is like a thousand dollars or so. So it's a quick way to lose money if uneducated about it. Try carefully if you're ever thinking about it in the future. Because I was betting high and learning on the way, I was consistently checking my trades and news around it, which is where I learned the term FUD, which is a tactic some people who want the stock to go down for various reasons use to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt to manipulate people to sell the stock. It was the beginning of 2020 and the stock market was crashing <coughs> for reasons I am unable to say on a YouTube video. I lost a lot of money fast. I was day trading very often. I took basically all the opportunities I could have day traded to make a trade without being marked as a day trader, which is less than three day trades per five days. For those of you who don't know, a day trade is when you buy or short the same or similar security, then sell or cover it the same day. For example, you start out Tuesday with 10 shares of Apple. You buy three shares at 10 a.m., then sell one 
one share at 11 a.m. That's a day trade because you bought and sold the same stock within a day. This is a very general example and definition. It gets pretty complicated. And if you're interested, please do your research. And I'm not here to give you financial advice, but just know that 13% of day traders actually turn a profit and less than 1% consistently are profitable. But what you do with that information is none of my business. Anyways, because I traded a lot, I was hit with a fat tax bill when tax season came around. And this is very important because I don't want anybody to experience the anxiety I experienced because this actually kept me up multiple nights. There's a lot of tax rules when it comes to securities and taxes, and these are the ones I learned through my experience. There are a bunch of exceptions, gray space, and so much more information that vary between different people and their situations, so please consult an actual tax expert if you think that any of these may apply to you. I'm gonna split this up into what I think is good and bad. Generally, your taxable capital gain or loss is just how much you gained minus how much you lost. Simple, right? But your trades are split into long and short term, long being over a year of holding, and short being under a year. Long-term sales get a huge tax benefit, such as a 0% tax until around the $42,000. Good. Also, if you end up with a capital loss, you can deduct up to $3,000 a year on other tax liabilities. Good. This carries over for life. Don't purposely try to lose money, but if you do, at least you'll have an infinite supply of $3,000 every year as an extra tax deduction. All right, so when you trade too much in too little time, your losses cannot be deducted until a future trade, but your winning will still count bad. This is called the wash sale rule, where if you sell a security at a loss and you buy the same security 30 days before or after the sale, then that loss cannot be deducted for that transaction. The IRS has a few great examples of this rule. Also, there's a tax advantage accounts, such as a 401k or IRA, where you either don't pay taxes when you invest in money or when you take out money. Good. After I learned the consequences of trading too much in too little time and a little bit of stock market taxes, I thought maybe I should uh, slow it down. People always preach about buying and holding and your portfolio will grow without you knowing it. And after all that stress from my learning curve, I was ready to give it a break. I got promoted at my job and with my improved income and whatever earnings I got from my previous trades, I bought a few stocks I liked and knew about and a few stocks that are safe and slow. Examples like ETFs such as VUG, VOO, SPY, and QQQ. It's essentially buying little bits and pieces of other companies. A few months later, my portfolio skyrocketed without stressing or thinking about it. It doesn't always go up, but research shows that it typically does because stocks typically follow the market, and the market is typically up over time. Now I just invest whatever extra cash I got after paying bills and such, and let the market take control. It was a rough experience for me, but I hope this video will make your investing experience smoother than mine. Hope you enjoyed this story, and all the lessons and mistakes it came with and thanks for watching finny bits please like and subscribe if you haven't already it really means a lot to this growing channel see you in the next video